Okay, so this is going to be sort of a first for me. It's going to be sort of a true unboxing, if you want to call it. Uh, I got two packages today, which I've been waiting for for a while. Um, I'm just going to cut off the shipping label so you weirdos can't stop me. If I can get this one off. But anyway, I got two things in the mail today. A replica ACOG and an armor mount for the ACOG. I'm just gonna cover that up. No, no, I'm just gonna open this one. This one is the armor mount. It's supposed to be. Yep, there we go. It's the O-Hunt armor mount. I'll show you some more once I get it together and then this is the ACOG now as most people are familiar with ACOGs they are this this is a replica Trijicon ACOG of the TA-31 which is what most of the military and most civilians use it's a 4x32 optic um, used one on my M16 when I was in the Marines. Uh, this is the most well-known, most replicated ACOG around. Like, every time you say ACOG, they think of the TA-31. Um, yeah. But what most people don't realize is there are actually multiple models of the TA-31, not TA-31, but there's more models than just the TA-31. But most people only know the TA-31 because it's used in the military. But the downside of TA-31s, Airsoft and Real Trijicon, is that the TA-31s have only about an inch, inch and a half eye relief. So you got to get your eye really close or you got to mount your scope or ACOG really far back. That's not just a problem with your airsoft replica, it's on the real one too. When I was in the military, I literally had my ACOG, the real one, as far back as I could. Now, for machine guns, that's not so good. You're dealing with a lot of recoil, a bigger gun, you want your face a little farther back. So, in the military, or at least for in the Marine Corps, they use pretty much a TA-11 ACOG. TA-11 in real life is a, I believe a 3.5 by 35 uh, scope. So a little less magnification, a little bit bigger of a field of view, but the eye relief on a TA-11 is about almost two to three inches. So on a machine gun, you don't have to get your, your eyes so close to the scope. They also use the TA-11 on the new M27, which I have my Daytona M27, which is why I looked for days <clears throat> for a clone TA-11 style ACOG. Now, as much as I wish I could afford to pay full price for a real Trijicon, I wasn't going to spend that for an airsoft gun. So. I finally, after days of searching, found one. It is a O-Hunt, just like this RMR mount, TA-11 clone. Now, the only difference between this TA-11 clone and the real one is that the clone is five by 35 millimeter. It is not a 3.5, so it has more magnification so that's the manual you got a cleaning cloth and then you have the TA-11 now at first glance it looks like a regular ACOG but here's a TA-31 and a TA-11 it is longer pretty much the same diameter the front same in the rear it is longer so this is the TA 11 clone 
by Ohunt. It has the horseshoe reticle. If I can get it to show, come on. I don't know if I can be able to get it to show. Uh, there you go, you get a little idea of it. That's the reticle. Let me see if I can get some white behind it. That might help. There we go, that's... Ah, come on, there we go. That's the reticle. Just like the reticle on the scope, the TA-11, the real one. Um, obviously the ones on the M27 and some of the M249s is a little different model. Um, it's pretty much, there's no hood in the front. It's just a lens cover, a kill flash. It's a little bit different, but for now, this is going to have to do. So, yeah. I got this a while back, so this is not new. I just had it laying around, but this is the tri uh, clone Trigicon RMR. So, this I haven't looked at this at all yet. I have a rough idea of how it's gonna go on. So, this RMR mount. Um, it doesn't come, but it's made to fit on a ACOG that doesn't have these ears. It's made to fit on an ACOG without the ears. That's why it has these two halves. So you can go around this. Now, if I'm correct, it should just fit like so. Yeah, there you go. It just fits like that. So, that's good. So let me find some screws. Let's see. We have grub screws here to level it up and down. And we have... Alright. So after probably 10-15 minutes, let's take this up. I found that the screws included with this mount, the long ones, which are here, these long ones, which are designed for the actual full circle, the full band, these screws actually were too small for the scope. So, focus, there we go. So, what I did was I looked around for longer screws. Now, these I cut down actually because they were too long. These were screws for the Picatinny RMR mount. So, when you get the RMR, most RMRs you buy, they come with a mount to mount onto regular rails. So these are actually the perfect thread and diameter for these holes on the scope. So, two things that I had to do. One, obviously I had to cut them down because they're too long. Now here, you see I grounded the head smaller because, where'd I put the mount? The mount has recessed holes for the screw head. Before, the screws, the screw head was too big. So they wouldn't sit flush. They would sit about here and then bind up. So I just put the screws in the chuck of my drill. And I just put them in my drill and took a file and just filed down the screw head. And then obviously I mounted everything up and I just cut the uh, screws to length. And you can kind of see I scuffed it up a little bit. But that's the bottom, and you can easily just take a Sharpie or something and cover that up. But most people won't even see it. So, another thing I did was to make this mount. Oh, wow, that's a very zoomed in. 
to, I wanted to make the mount sit more flush with the scope because it wasn't really perfectly round inside. So I just took a sanding wheel for my Dremel and I just slowly sanded the high spots so it would sit a lot better. And obviously it would sit lower because it's not being pushed up. So, I'm um, sorry I didn't film it for you guys. I mean, it was just pretty much me grinding and test fitting and cutting and searching for screws and cursing. But we can now finally start putting this together. So, got some thread lock on these new screws. There's one. Get the other. That's way too much. Boom. Start the screws. I'm just gonna tighten them not all the way down. I'm just gonna start threading them in because you know they're they're quite long. So I'm just gonna be threading these in so they're kind of long so it takes a little bit but these are the perfect size for these threads so like I said before I wasn't able to get it stay there we go I wasn't able to get it so that there was no gap on these ears. There's still going to be a little bit of a gap, but there's a lot less of a gap than there was before. So that's good. So that one's getting snug. This one's really snug. All right. Now, I don't trust the metal of the scope housing, so I'm not going to torque them down a lot because I don't want to strip the threads. That's more than enough, especially for airsoft, that's more than enough. Now, time to deal with these screws here, which one's missing anyway, and they're not even long enough to reach. Maybe they're long enough. Let me see. No, they're long enough. Still missing one though. Let me check the bag. There's nothing in there. Check the table. Of course, my table's black, so whatever screw there is, can't see it at all. Huh. Where did that screw go? Well, it's not too important. I mean, it's not like there's a lot of flex in the plate because it's so small. So I'm not even gonna really worry about that. I don't know, I probably dropped it or something. I don't know, it's not here anymore. Either nev there never was one or it's not here anymore. Anyway, now let's take the armor off. I'm gonna try to use the screws that are included with the RMR. Um, just because I like these a little bit better than the screws that came with the RMR mount. I'll tell you why. One, they fit perfectly with the RMR. Two, the head of the screws that came with the RMR mount are smaller. You can see. Come on, focus. The head of the screw is smaller. And if you can see on the armor mount, or the armor, you got a lot more surface area with these bigger screw heads. So, I'm gonna use these. First, I'm just gonna test fit, make sure they fit, and think, thankfully, these are the correct threads. 
there's yeah, those are definitely the correct threads so one thing's working out finally take that out take the armor off put the armor on that fits put some loctite on these armor screws Hopefully everything lines up, which it looks like it does. That's always good. Second one, put a little Loctite on it. Now these, you're definitely, you're not gonna wanna use red Loctite because in order to get to the battery on the RMR, you gotta take off the RMR. So it's a little bit of a pain. So these, I'm just gonna snug up a little bit threads match perfectly it's always good just a little bit past finger tight just a little bit when the allen screw kind of hurts your finger to put to uh when you have the allen key like this and it hurts your finger to push like it really hurts it just digs in that's when you know you should stop and then go just a little bit i then turn it around and maybe go 16th of a turn but nothing more it's just airsoft i mean it's going on a daytona and my daytona probably has more kick than any airsoft gun around and that's what i do with all the screws and as long as you put loctite they're not coming up so that is my ta11 clone with an armor all little boom so that is one sexy scope There's a TA31 and a TA11. <clears throat> Let's put these side by side. Boom. Alright. Thanks for watching. If you have any guys that have any questions, any comments, say, you know, anything, please feel free to comment down below.